If you currently have or are planning to get an American Express credit card, here are the top 5 mistakes that could mean you are leaving value on the table or even actively losing money. American Express has become practically synonymous with credit card rewards, especially here in the UK where the competition from other providers is not that strong. And today I want to talk about the most common things people tend to get wrong when picking or using an American Express credit card so that you can avoid them and make sure that you get the maximum possible value out of your card. Mistake number one on our list today is missing out on welcome bonuses or more specifically not getting as much out of them as you otherwise could have. A welcome bonus is an incentive that the credit card issuer can provide to make it more attractive for you to open a credit card with them. And American Express in particular does this part really, really well, with most of their welcome bonuses being worth at least £100 and often significantly more. And there are a couple of ways in which people get less out of welcome bonuses than they otherwise could have. Firstly, a very simple mistake is not using the referral program. Basically, when it comes to applying for a new Amex credit card, you can either do it directly on their website or you can ask a friend or a family member or anyone really who is already a customer with Amex for their referral link. And the thing is, applying through a referral link usually gives you a higher welcome bonus. Let me give you a couple of examples here. The Amex cashback credit card advertises £125 as a welcome bonus when you apply directly through the Amex website. However, if you use a referral link, there is an additional £25 bonus. Or looking at Amex Gold, which offers a 20,000 membership reward points welcome bonus when applying directly through the website. With a referral, however, this can go as high as 30,000 membership reward points, which represents a 50% increase. Moreover, when you use a referral link, the person who provided you with that link will also get a small bonus if you get approved for the card. So it's kind of a win-win situation for both of you. This also opens up a conversation about the so-called two-player strategy, where two people can refer each other for different Amex cards in a specific order and get a lot of value out of welcome bonuses. But that is really a topic for a whole separate video, which I may make sometime soon. And by the way, if you enjoy the content of this channel and you don't want to miss future videos, then please consider subscribing. It would also just mean a lot to me. Another mistake to do with welcome bonuses that I want to highlight is to do with the eligibility criteria. The thing is that these bonuses are intended for new customers, so you can't really keep applying for American Express cards and keep getting those bonuses one after the other. The official criteria is that you are only eligible for welcome bonus if you haven't held a personal American Express card in the past 24 months. So the usual rule of thumb that people tend to follow is that you can only get at most one welcome bonus every two years. However, that is not entirely true because there are a couple of exceptions to this rule, which means that you can do significantly better than that. To explain what I mean, let me first break all the Amex cards into three categories. Firstly, we have the cards that earn you membership reward points, such as the Platinum card, the Gold card, and the free Amex membership rewards card. Secondly, there are the cards that earn you Avios, such as the British Airways card and its premium version, the British Airways Premium Plus. And finally, all the other cards that Amex has, which are the Cashback cards, the Nectar, the Marriott Bonvoy card, and anything else is going to go into the third category. And so when it comes to the eligibility criteria, for a welcome bonus, most of these cards say that you can only get one if you haven't held any personal American Express credit card in the past 24 months. However, there are two cards on this list that are different. First of all, the Amex Platinum card says that you can get a welcome bonus as long as you haven't held a membership reward earning credit card in the past 24 months. And then secondly, the British Airways Premium Plus card says that you can get a welcome bonus on it as long as you haven't held an obvious earning credit card for the past 24 months. What this means in practice is that if you eventually want to get the Platinum card or the British Airways Premium Plus card, or maybe both, you can first get any card from category three, enjoy the welcome bonus on it, and it will not affect your eligibility for the British Airways Premium Plus or the Amex Platinum welcome bonuses in the future. So in theory, you could even get three welcome bonuses in a row, one from a Category 3 card, one from the British Airways Premium Plus, and one from the Amex Platinum. But while this is all nice in theory, in practice, do be careful and don't open more cards than you need, and always make sure that the welcome bonus you are getting is actually worth the effort and the money that you are spending. And that, by the way, is a pretty good segue into our mistake number two, overvaluing the benefits. This applies to any credit card, not just American Express. So when you decide to open a card that carries an annual fee, it is usually a balance between the annual fee and the benefits, so you need to make sure that the benefits that you are getting are worth to you more than the annual fee that you are paying, 
Otherwise, what's the point? But somehow this is an aspect that a lot of people tend to get wrong, partially because Amex and other credit card issuers really invest into their marketing, trying to make it look as if the benefits their cards provide are worth much more on paper than in reality. And to best explain this, let me just give you a few examples. One of the most popular credit card benefits that people pay for is the airport lounge access. So the question here is, if your credit card comes with complimentary lounge access, how much is that benefit worth? Well, let me go on for example Heathrow website and find out that the Plaza Premium Lounge at Terminal 5 charges £40 per entry. So that means that if I have a credit card that grants me complimentary lounge access, that credit card is saving me £40 per person every time I'm flying out of Heathrow Terminal 5 and similar for other airports and terminals. That sounds pretty great, doesn't it? That is not entirely accurate though, because the real question is, if you didn't have a card that gives you lounge access, would you be willing to pay £40 out of pocket per person for lounge access? And if the answer to that is no, then the lounge access benefit on your credit card is only worth as much as you would be otherwise willing to pay out of pocket to get into a lounge if you didn't have that credit card. Or for example, if you're someone who mostly takes direct flights and you prefer to get to the airport at the last possible moment, then the lounge access perk may be not worth anything to you at all. And by the way, as a side note, if you're interested in the topic of lounge access, I have a video on the channel where I talk about the cheapest way to get lounge access through a credit card and I have left a link to that video down below in the description. Another place where you could potentially overvalue benefits are the various credits, for instance, on the American Express Platinum card. This credit card costs £650 a year among other things, it gives you £150 every year to spend at select restaurants in the UK, another £150 to spend at select restaurants abroad, and finally £100 to spend at Harvey Nichols. All of this totals up to £400 of credits, which covers more than half of the annual fee. But again, it's the same question really. Would you spend money at these places or similar ones if you didn't have the card in the first place? Finally, another example here is the Fine Hotels and Resorts program, which comes as another benefit of the Platinum card. Amex on their website claims that the FHR benefit provides an average value of 600 US dollars per stay at a participating hotel. And this sounds so far-fetched to me because at the same time they fail to mention that the hotels that participate in the program can sometimes charge or actually often charge more than a thousand pounds per night. I mean, don't get me wrong, this can be an amazing benefit if you are either the kind of person who already stays at hotels like that or if you find a good deal on an FHR property which to be fair do exist. Anyway, moving on to mistake number three and that one is gonna be not using supplementary cards. A supplementary card is a card that you can open for some someone who lives at the same address as yourself, for example your spouse or another family member. In that case, both cards will be linked to the same account, which is your account, and whatever the supplementary card hold member spends, you will be responsible for paying it off, and if, if the bill is not paid, then it's your credit history that is gonna take a hit. However, if you already have someone in your life with whom you share your finances, then using a supplementary card could be highly beneficial. First of all, the supplementary card holder often gets a lot of the same benefits that you already get on your credit card. For instance, with the Amex Platinum, you can for absolutely free open a supplementary card and give it to someone, and they will also get lounge access, they will get travel insurance, they will get the hotel benefits, and a few more bits and pieces. So it's a way to sort of double the benefits of your card without doubling the annual fee. Secondly, if you're trying to hit a spending threshold to get a welcome bonus, a companion voucher, or some other kind of incentive, then the spending that happens on the supplementary card will also count towards that threshold, helping you to achieve the goal faster. Finally, holding a supplementary card doesn't affect the holder's eligibility for welcome bonuses with Amex in the future. That is, if they decide to later get their own American Express credit card, they will be eligible for a welcome bonus because they will be treated as a new card holder. Mistake number four on the list is overpaying the annual fee. And there are two ways in which you can sort of indirectly do it. Firstly, I've had quite a few people tell me something along the lines of, oh, I have 60,000 membership reward points on my gold card, but my anniversary with the card is coming up, which means they're gonna charge me the annual fee, so I either have to spend my points as soon as possible, or I have to pay the annual fee in order to not lose the points. Well, the thing is, you don't have to do either of those things, because for most paid American Express cards, you can actually downgrade them to a free version and keep whatever rewards you have. For instance, for the gold card and the platinum card, you can downgrade them to the free American Express rewards card and keep all your 
your membership reward points. Or if you have the British Airways Premium Plus card that earns Avios, that one can also be downgraded to its free version. However, actually with an Avios card, you don't even have to do that because the Avios are deposited into your British Airways Executive Club account every month and are not tied to your credit card. Another way in which annual fees can cost you more is if you're not asking for retention offers. So let's say that you have an Amex credit card that you generally enjoy and you would like to keep it for one more year. However, you find the annual fee just a little bit too high. In that case, you can go to Amex and ask them for a retention offer. This can come in the form of a discount on the annual fee, or most often is going to be a stash of membership reward points or avios or whatever kind of rewards your card is earning. All you need to do is just go to the support chat in the Amex app and ask them if they have any retention offers available on your account. For example, last year, I got a total of 55,000 membership reward points in retention offers between two of my cards. I do talk a little bit more about this in my one year with the Amex gold card video, which I linked down below in the description in case you are curious. And now mistake number five is going to be ignoring Amex offers. These are the various cashback and discount deals that you can find in the offers tab of your Amex app. And from my experience, they could save me a few hundred pounds a year. Granted, a lot of them are going to be irrelevant, but it only takes a few good offers every year to make this benefit extremely valuable. Personally, I tend to get most excited about airline and hotel offers. And for example, I recently saved this offer with United that basically says that if I spend 700 pounds, I'm going to get 350 pounds back. And this is a significant discount, especially given that I'm planning a trip to the US pretty soon. But anyway, there are so many more ways to get the most out of your credit cards, be it from Amex or from another provider. And if you want to learn more about that, consider subscribing to the channel because that's exactly the kind of things we discuss here. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching the video today. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time.